Welcome to the Guidelines Podcast, a once every two weeks discussion about applying user-centered design within South Africa. My guest this week is Cape Town-based student and all-round creative, Josh Bull. We met up in our hometown of Howick, and over coffee, he shared his thoughts about the crucial role of media in the lives of young South Africans. Enjoy. This is our first episode, and uh, our first guest is Josh Bull. Thank you. So Josh Bull is a, he's one of my oldest and, and best friends. And, um, Thank you. We've, uh, we've, we've worked together on some interesting projects, and we've, we've, we've worked creatively over almost a 10-year period now on, oh, on different things. Yeah. And I think it's been interesting to, to see how your creative journey has led you on a very different path to me, but now we're almost, we're almost at a similar, like we had very different trajectories, but we're almost at the same location. Yeah, right? similar, similar end goals, but different routes to exactly. get there. And the, yeah. way, and the way we're, we're actually practicing in UX, but in, in different capacities, and we yeah. reach there in completely different ways. Yeah. Uh, first off, I'm wondering if you could introduce yourself and tell us like who you are, um, what you do on a week to week basis, are, are you studying, what are your interests, that kind of thing, and then we can For sort sure. of dig into the meat of it later. For sure. So um, I am a currently a, a student um, enrolled at the University of Cape Town. I'm studying my master's in political communication. Um, but that's through the media department. So it's just a sort of snazzy way of, of saying I'm studying media whilst looking at politics as well. So looking at how media operates, um, in the world of politics. Yeah, sure. um, cool. And that can be obviously very broad or, yeah. or, or not. Um, and yeah, so, so I'm, I'm doing my master's. I do. Well, you're, you're, you're just about to start. Just about to start my master's. Yes, yeah. Um, I do a bit of teaching as well. I really cool. enjoy tutoring, helping first years. Yeah, I'd um, love to talk about that in a bit. Yeah, well. helping first years get through their their courses. Yeah. Um, because I remember being there, and you know, was sorry, just a quick aside. Cool. One of the funniest things is I find I get all the same questions that I had for my tutors, um, and I don't have the answers for them. <laughs> you know, so I expected my tutors to have the answers and yeah. I realise now that the tutors don't have the answers to those questions. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so, so yeah, and then um, on the side, I, I, I'm a person of um, many hobbies. Yeah. So I'm a um, mountain biker, I surf a lot, I'm a watch enthusiast, design enthusiast of of yeah. all kinds musician yeah. um and i suppose the 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 what all of my hobbies center around is creativity yeah. and i think that's at the core of all of them sure um, i think that's what keeps me going as a person that's cool okay so you you're studying in cape town yeah and um you're, you're busy going into your masters uh, you're just about to start uh, how are you feeling about it have you decided on a topic yet or is that still kind of being worked out so how I'm feeling about it is is an easy question to answer. Yeah. Super excited. Cool. I'm really keen. Cool, cool. Um, I do. I enjoy research, so I'm I'm looking forward to to getting stuck in this year. What I will be doing my masters on is is a a, a harder question to answer. So that I I don't have a definitive answer for you just yet. So I'm um I'm obviously just about to start my masters. I'm doing it by. Uh, dissertation only so just writing a thesis and so, so you have lots of time on your hands lo- lots of time on my hands and and um my thesis topic is still up in the air so cool. the start of the semester is going to require a lot of meeting with my supervisors and really nailing down the topic so if we revisit that in six months i'm sure I've, okay. we'll have a better answer for it than that but but gen- generally what my interests in the world of media um relates to sort of new forms of media online media digital content okay. um and and more specifically how young people are using that to engage so sure. um, I, I can remember you did a, a a project i think it was last year or the year before where you it's called woke news network and basically you were looking at like different ways of news organizations to meet youth where they're at uh, how did that go yeah so that um 
if we're talking about how it went in terms of marks versus what I think about yeah. it now, those are two different things. It did quite well in the assignment, but yes, yes. in hindsight, I can see some yeah. issues with it. But um, <laughs> the, the, the idea behind the project was it was taking this, this notion that we, seen, we are seeing a decline in the mm. consumption of traditional forms of media yeah. amongst young people within our societies. Um, and obviously that can change based on your context, but mm. there's a sort of a, a trend that has, is being seen globally. Mm. And when relating that to a political context, um, a lot of people are talking about how that could be dangerous because the media is often viewed within democracies as being a public sphere. Yeah, yeah. A pu- exactly, where people yeah. can come together, engage with one another, yeah. inform themselves, and ultimately within a democracy that informed citizens are what deepen the democracy, what strengthen it. And so if young people are not consuming these traditional forms of media that were classified as being the public sphere, they are not necessarily informing themselves and that could be detrimental to democracy. So that that was the problem we were kind of faced with. So it was going as... um, news as a news organization what how would you combat this problem how would you start to get young people to consume your news you know because they're not reading newspapers they might not be sitting down and watching um the evening broadcast um, on tv or well possibly they don't listen to radio in the car they just listen to audiobooks you know what i mean there's there's there could be many many reasons for it and so my my solution at the time that i came up with was Instead of trying to go, right, we're a news network trying to attract young people and try to get young people to, to read more of our stuff. And I suppose this could apply to anyone other than um, yeah. news networks. But for the assignment, it was specifically, we were a, a news network. And instead of trying to attract young people to us, instead mm-hmm. of trying to bring young people to us, we actually actively go and find them. That was the like idea. It, it's classic UX. It, it's yeah. meeting people where they're at. Exactly. Rather than saying like, this is the new, new network. You have to go download our app. You have to go find us. You're saying, who are our users? How are we going to best interact with them? And then meeting them there. Exactly. So mm-hmm. it, was, it, it was engaging with where, where are young people putting their attention? Where is their attention? And, going, and looking, well, actually social media platforms and, and online media yeah. has the monopoly of young people's attention. It's, it, it's what captivates them. So it was going, we're going to go to them online yeah. as opposed to trying to pull them to our, yeah. to our platform. You mentioned earlier that the sort of public perception is that the youth cannot be getting a well-rounded perspective from sort of these like memes and snippets. What is your opinion on it? Do you think that the youth are well informed? Do you think that these platforms, where where is Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, wherever? I mean, like there was, there's been a huge debacle over the Facebook involvement in the American elections, and then yeah. people don't aren't necessarily viewed in a positive light. Do, do you think it's the same as Africa? Do you, do you think that the youth can be well informed yeah. by only getting their news from Instagram or, or something else? I think South Africa is a is a is a tricky example and um, just because we're still a developing country yeah so access to media is still a slight issue so if we look if we were looking at just the sort of statistics of how people consume media in this yeah. country um mo- radio is still the dominant form of of um media consumption in this mind. country Absolutely yeah goes my mind. yeah so and then and that's because that's uh, affordable and people have access to it um Whereas the context in America is something slightly different yeah. right? because they're a developed Nation. country and their access to, to media is sort yeah. of much easier and yeah. to data and everything. Um, but I think, I think it's a tricky one. I think cell phones... I was actually listening to a debate on the radio the other day and it really frustrated Listen me. Listen to the radio? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when I say I was listening to the radio, I was in the kitchen and it was on in the background. Okay. Not, not, my, not my choice, but it was there. It was, I was one of the 11 million listeners tuned in South Africa. Cool. But um, I, I got really frustrated by the, by the discussion because they were talking about the cell phone and screen time and youth socializing yeah um and it was a classic debate about you know 
kids are spending more times on their on their phone. Yeah. This is negative. This is bad. Yeah. This phone is phones are a bad thing. Um, and I got I I remember getting a bit frustrated. I almost phoned in, but decided not to in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it frustrated me because it, it we have got to the point where a cell phone is no longer one thing and we can't classify it as one thing. No, it's a personal um, computer. I it's a personal it's, computer. Yeah. My, my, the, the, the things I engage with on my phone, um, are this sort of, there's an infinite number of, of things I'm doing. I could be messaging people, but I could be, um, engaging in business inquiries, engaging in, um, developing my business. Mm-hmm. I could be, um, reading a book, reading a book, yeah. you know, and so the phone is not just a, a, a single device that does one thing. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, it really, the uses are so broad. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's also the tricky thing in relation to this debate mm. is that it's so nuanced when you're looking at how people inform themselves. Yeah. Because, for example, Political satire, you know, mm. in, 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 in traditional forms of, of print media, there was always a cartoon in the newspaper, mm. you know, it was political satire. And now political satire could be a meme. Because really? I, I can even remember in high school, yeah. us doing sort of breakdowns of political satire comic books. Yeah. And like as part of exams. Yeah. I wonder at what point we'll go from like looking at the Daily Show. Yeah. Like a Daily Show episode of Trevor Noah, when that will become valid or when a meme will become valid. And so, I suppose just to, just to hop back to your question about are young people informed? Yes, I can't yes. speak for everyone, yeah. but I like to think I can speak for myself. Oh. <laughs> for my, for myself. I, I like to think I'm, I'm an informed citizen. I like to think I, I stay on top of, well, I, I certainly try to. And then just in my personal capacity, if I engage with where I get most of my political information a lot of the time it's through political entertainment mm. so so the daily show you know yeah. it's political satire it's entertaining but it's informing at the same time yes. um political memes but I, th- I think that's almost the onus is on um content creators now is to like if you're going to be presenting something you need to do it in the most palatable way possible and so like you're creating a show that's entertaining but also informative and that's why it works and that's why it's sticky and people would sometimes object to that in it, going back again to this to this notion of the media as the public sphere because they're saying if if it's a place you inform yourself you know you can't the media should be unbiased neutral yeah. you know all those all those um yeah sort of ideals that that people it's often tricky, refer tricky. to but when it comes to entertainment, which is the nature of online media, you know, mm. it's never going to be neutral. It's, it, there's always going to be... In order for it to, to be humorous, it has to have a certain standpoint to it. It yeah. has to have a certain bias so that it can play off of stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, again, we as active consumers can still sift through that. So I can watch the daily show and I can understand the political standpoint, the jokes are being made from. I can understand, um, what, what, where the humor lies in the joke, Mm. but also where the information lies in the joke. What Mm. is the, 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 crux of what's being spoken about yes yeah. it's funny but what's it talking about yes. um and so so I, again i was I, just too hard back to i think it's a hard question i think it's very nuanced because i think mm-hmm. the ways people inform themselves um i think we, we're we're highly active consumers i think that's mm-hmm. the difference is consuming at a much higher rate than maybe someone who just watched an hour of news and even exactly you um, consume throughout the day a much higher rate and also from a multitude of different platforms. We're no longer just relying on one platform for our information. We're not just reading the newspaper and then we know everything we need to know or watching it. You're seeing something on Facebook, 
then you see someone share it on Twitter, you follow a link on Twitter, yeah. you see a meme about it on Instagram, and the whole time you're piecing the narrative together within your mind. So you're, you're taking a l- little bit from everywhere and, and, and building the story and building the narrative. Um, is that a good or a bad thing? I think that's another debate entirely. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, so I, I have another question relating to that. So, so you mentioned that you've been tutoring this Ooh. past year. Uh, it was 2018 your first year of tutoring, or was it 2017 as well? 2018. Yeah, 2018 was your first year of tutoring. Yeah. Uh, were there any trends that you noticed? I mean, like, you're literally working with first years uh, straight into university. Um, have I, there been any trends that stood out to you? I I think tutoring was an, was an interesting experience for me. I, I, I got a lot more out of it than I intended to. Yeah. Um, as a joke... I, I often tell people that I, on on many occasions, cited the first year textbook in my honors dissertation, yeah. which I did. Yeah, you know, and I, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and, I, and I laugh because I think the 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 process of of trying to teach made me reflect on yeah. what I thought I knew cool. a lot more, and 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 helped me, um, I think, get a better a grounding in within my field. Cool. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> in terms of trends, I guess, the... the, the like, an, like an are, 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 one, are young yeah. South Africans interested and are they engaged with oh, what's yeah. happening in our country? And, like, uh, do, do they have strong opinions? I mean, in my, from my perspective, the youth is often painted in a perspective of being quite ignorant and not in the know. Has that been something that you found or are people, are people passionate? Are people are. There's yeah. passion. There's, there's, yeah. there's enthusiasm and there's, and there's understanding, there's opinions. And, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed being able to engage um, with young people um, about what they think about the current state of the country, the future of the country, um, the state of politics. Mm. Um, I, 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 I really en- enjoyed that. Um, and it's weird. Uh, to, to some extent, you know how we could look at our parents and go, they, they were a generation that grew up without sort of a lot of digital technology and that came into their life at a much later stage, whereas we grew up with, with <clears throat> technology um, at almost every phase of our, yeah. our life. And so we, we think of ourselves as inherently understanding it better and knowing it better. Yeah. I almost sometimes felt like that with my, even with my tut group, that these younger kids had four more years of technology on me. Sure. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they've been with it. At a at a young age, so it was it was weird. I almost felt like the old guy to some extent. <laughs> at twenty two years old. At twenty two I mean, like years old, I was like these these eighteen year olds know more than me, <laughs> um, and I think that's, I think that's true. I think yeah, they, they, they 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 have grown up yeah. with with more interaction sure. with technology, um. So 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 it, it that 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 was that was. Yeah. A pretty fun thing for me as well, <laughs> to to feel like the grandpa of the class. Yeah, cool. Um, but I I always I always think an interesting one is so obviously media studies that's humanities, and most of the assignment based stuff is all essay writing. Yeah. Um, that's sort of how you're tested in humanities, yeah. really. Um, and essay writing requires researching. Um, reading what other authors have put out there, other theorists, what people are saying. Um, and traditionally, the way you would have done that is by going to the library mm-hmm. and taking out books yeah. and, and, and reading what's been published. Um, and I laugh because my mom, when I talk to my parents about, about the library, you know, my mom regularly talks about when she was at university using the library as a place where she would go to get information, yeah. I use the library as a place to go and work. Um, <laughs> I use the Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, 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 in the library. In the library. And, yeah. and, and it sounds funny, but um, I did my whole undergrad and never took out a book from the library. Yeah, um, I sourced all of that content online and I had access to all of that content. And it was amazing that I can have access to 
multitudes of online journals yeah. and all this information. And it was fun because I, yes, I would be doing stuff in relation to my assignments a lot of the time. Yeah. But also if I was just interested in something, I could go and see what was being published in journals about it. What cool, cool. Um, academics were saying about it. And it was, it's, yeah. I, I, like, I like that side of the internet and, and new technology. And I think that's what interests me is that it sort of democratizes knowledge to some extent. Yes. And, and the onus is on the individual to, yes. to seek out knowledge, to pursue knowledge. Okay. Um, and the internet allows them to do that. Yeah, um, 100%. No. It, it removes some physical barriers. Mm. And, I, and I think that's also at the heart of, of UI and UX, almost removing the physical barriers yes. so f- for like t- to go back to my analogy you don't have to be in a physical library to read journals i can do it online sure, and cool. and then to get to to some some ui work i'll be doing with um my company forge where we're developing a, a hiking app it's also trying to integrate your phone into the outdoor experience so that your phone is not a foreign object in the outdoor experience cool, and cool. and the process is it, it is part of the process yeah um so yeah i think it's that's cool i, I think actually on, on the topic of forge i'd like to change the for sure. gears of this conversation i think i've noticed a very interesting trend within my short stint within ux is you'll get people working within UX, but they've come at it from so many different angles. Like I've worked with marketing students who are working as programmers. Yeah. I'm a programming student who's taught himself design. And yeah. um, you, you'll get people who've worked in completely different fields, but now coming into UX with a unique perspective. And I, when I think of, of you and how you came to UX, I think like you're the poster child for that. Like, I mean, you've done this broad range of things and now you're working within a UX role, but like you're not a UX designer. Like mm-hmm. it's just one of the things that you do. Um, I'm wondering, like, could you tell us how, like, how you got into doing design in general, firstly, yeah. um, and then the road that led to you now working on your, your company Forge and this hiking app that you guys are putting together? I, I think at the core um, of all of the sort of different roads that have led me to here is the notion of people yes, um, yeah. I think people is is at the heart of it so um my interest in people dictated my studies at university dictated what courses I did yeah. you know um my interest in in how people interacted engaged communicated yeah. that 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 dictated what I studied and I think that interest of people is also what spreads over into my hobbies. So my music, one of the things I enjoy, I really enjoy about music is that I can um, write a song and interact with someone else through it. You know, cool. someone can listen to someone can listen to the music and and engage with it and appropriate it for their context and it can mean something to them. Yeah. Um, it's a form of communication, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's what I like about design as well. Design is a a form of communication. Yeah. Um, and so my kind of passion for people, um, passion and, and, and passion for creativity and almost need for creative outlets in my life kind of brought me into the field of design. And mm. I, I think it stemmed from <laughs> it sounds funny, but my first MacBook, like I think mm. my first Mac, kind of kickstarted the whole yeah. the whole um, design UX UI yeah. um, interest because all of a sudden I started using some programs. You're that... Using a beautiful operating system that's been exactly. like you get the feeling that's been designed, and then you started doing design work in I think it was Affinity. Yes, I started yeah. in Affinity, and actually I I hundred percent have you to thank for that because yeah. you. I had just got a MacBook and you were, you came and were like, Bro, there's this new yeah. um, product that's being released called Affinity Designer. Mm. It's going to change the game mm. and you only have to buy it once. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no subscription. Yeah, yeah, and I remember going, well, that sounds like right up my alley. Yeah. Um, so I bought it once and, and, and started there and it was a 
tool I learned to use, and then uh, from there I moved into other programs. It's and, interesting to see you go from graphic design. I can remember you doing yeah. uh, some Breaking Bad stuff, and yes. like, even like album arts and things. And then slowly but surely edging towards doing more and more screen related stuff and, and more yes. and more UI. Um, now sort of resulting in what you're doing now, working in, in Sketch and, and, and building building interfaces. Yeah. I, I it think, was like a natural progression. Like I, I hadn't spoken to you for a while and suddenly like you were just doing it. Yeah. I think... What led to that? So so my, my involvement in Forge, I would say, led to my work in UI and UX. So it's out of necessity, which is so cool. It was. Like, it, it, it was. It's, it's not a thing where it's like, I am now a UI, UX designer. It's like, it needs to get done. I mean, like, I could learn. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, I, I got involved in Forge through talking to a friend about it. It wasn't, it wasn't my original idea by any means. You know? Yeah, yeah. And other guys came up with it. So, there's four of us that work in the business. And um, one of them I was studying with at the time, and we were chatting on campus the one day, and he started telling me about Forge. And I remember just going, like, wow, this is a cool idea, you know? And, mm. I'm quite an enthusiastic person and we got really into mm-hmm. our discussion and um and it from there I it just kind of more conversations arose and I got more and more involved um and then officially became part of the business and then it was one of those things it was like well we need someone to design an app mm. and then it was a like what a student becomes a designer overnight exactly because mm. we have a look at our bank account yeah. which wasn't big at the time <laughs> um and all of a sudden we're going, well, we can't pay someone to... And I'm going, well, hmm, I, I can take a crack at it. Like, yeah. I like Affinity. Yeah. And so I started in Affinity. I started doing all my UI and UX in Affinity design yes, yeah. and, and uh, copying, pasting buttons and, and <laughs> um, you know, downloading, like, yeah. uh, SVGs that had buttons on it and stuff like that <laughs> cool. so I could take them all. Cool. Um, and so I started on Affinity and then from there moved on to other platforms that almost the tool doesn't matter it's more about the craft yeah i i think so and 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 you do find tools that are more optimized yes and 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 that's wonderful when you do find them yeah um but yeah it was it was out of curiosity necessity Hmm. um that 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 it started and i love it (laughs) so 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 what is forge um yeah so forge is a we're a we're a uh, technically a geospatial solutions company. Um, but what, 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 <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, what, what, <laughs> Bring we, it down. what we do is we, we, we have a hiking app. Cool. So currently we, we are um, centered around Cape Town. Cape Town is a city with um, obviously built around the Table Mountain National Park. Um, and it's the outdoor community in Cape Town is huge. People Massive. love getting out. Um, hiking, mountain natives biking. and tourists. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the outdoor element of Cape Town is a big tourist attraction. And so mm-hmm. what, what we did um, is we went out and, and just started manually mapping um, yeah. hiking trails um, around Cape Town, in and around Cape Town. And we mapped the whole of the Southern Peninsula um, oh. in Cape Town, which uh, is adds up to around about, we have 17... 100 kilometers of of hiking trails mapped at, at the moment on mm. our app and that's just in Cape Town so obviously mm. we, we will we would like to expand but we started just in the Cape Town um, context and so we were trying to create a product that could encourage people to get outdoors mm-hmm. but aid them in getting outdoors a tool yeah. if you will you yeah. know so so it's surfaced routes for them yeah exactly so so it could spark some sort of inquis an inquisitiveness in them they can yeah. they can um search through our database of hikes they can um play around on the map see points of interest um see hikes in relation to where they are yeah. um and just really encourage people to get outdoors and then when they get out there our our tool helps them navigate the outdoors, mm. helps them find their way. So we have incredibly accurate data that mm. that um, is accurate within centimeters. Yeah, and I think the thing is you also know your, your target audience so on, and that's what makes it unique. You yourself 
have done these routes. Yes. Not just for work related things. You, you've done them. Yeah. As right? a as a hobby and you're part of the community that you're building for. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I and I think the the idea behind it is sharing that that outdoor space, sharing that yeah. love of what we do with other people. Yeah. Um, and it's sharing that experience with other people, bringing other people into the outdoors and, and, and allowing them to experience the same thing. Um, and whether that is local Cape Town residents, tourists coming to Cape Town wanting to hike, um, it, it doesn't really matter. Because otherwise, the outdoors can be quite an intimidating experience, you know, yeah. and, and it's a space for only people who have knowledge about the outdoors to go and navigate. You don't want to get lost. And you don't want to get lost, mm-hmm. you know, and... So, so our, our product aims to be a tool to help people get outdoors um, in a way that they feel comfortable cool. in doing so. Cool. so. So you don't have to feel out of your depth. Okay. Um, you, if you want to go for a hike and, and you want to watch the sunset, you know, mm. maybe you're planning a romantic date, trying to romance your partner. That's cool, that's cool. Um, you can you can sort through our database and find hikes that we've tagged that have sunset views. Sure. Um, or you want to go on a walk with your dog, but you don't know where you can take your dog legally in the Table Mountain sure. National Park. It's almost we, like experiences within... So you have all these routes, and like, yes, objectively, these, this route take, will take 5Ks or whatever, but exactly. also like, this is useful for this kind of experience. This exactly. This is for this kind of experience. So exactly. It's making it more accessible, yeah. Making it more accessible and, and, and sharing that experience with people. And I suppose cool. that... that comes back to what I was saying with what got me into you. Because this was my interest in people. Because I think that, mm. at the end of the day, is is at the heart of mm. of UX and UI. Is people. They're people using your products. They're yeah. people engaging with your products. Um, yeah. And you have to be thinking about those people when designing. Yeah, I think I think what's, what's often dangerous is people rush to uh, take on a perceived identity. So to take on the role of, like I am now a UX designer and they sort of neglect any other creative areas of their life. And the cool thing is through chatting with you is like UX is, it's a part of your life. One day you'll leave it behind. Yes. But because yeah. it's not, you're not a UX designer, you work with people. Exactly. And UX just happens to be a part of that. Exactly. Which is cool. Um, I, 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 I had an interesting conversation with a, a graphic designer the other day yeah. um, where I was telling them about Forge and, and, and the work yeah. we've been doing. And and when you listen to this podcast, depending on when you listen to it, Forge may or may not be out. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so go and have a look on your, go to the app, store, on your yeah. app store and, yeah. and, and <laughs> give it a download if it is. We'll put a link in the show. Yeah, we'll put a link in the description. But um, I was having an interesting conversation with the designer where um, I was speaking to her and she was like, oh, okay, so you've been doing UX, UI. So I was like, yeah, that's, mm. that's what I'm doing. She goes, oh, like, what part of it? So I'm like, what do you mean what part she's like yeah. oh have you been doing the wireframing or what yeah. my response was all of it <laughs> yeah, really. you know? and it was like yeah. I was I was like well I'm, I'm we, we need a product so I'm just trying to build a start to finish yeah. in any in any way I can yeah. <laughs> you know and it was so so that it's, that's what you're talking about I'm not having your identity tied to one skill or yeah. one element um but it's like the whole process. Yeah, I, I've noticed that with myself. Because, I mean, with, with my degree, we've done coding and we've done sort of art and, and design. And, like, I don't view app development or web development or design as being something that's separate from programming. Like, yeah. programming is design and design is programming. And you, you design something and then you go build it and then you modify it. And then you realize that maybe... Like, this actually doesn't work now after you've prototyped it. So, then you go back and you change the design. And, like, you swap between the processes. I, I almost don't know yeah. how to design separately from implementation. Yeah. Which is a cool place to be in. Yes. And I think it's a healthy space to be in. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Completely. Completely. I, I think it's a a fundamental part of... Also, of just different sectors. You know, of all yeah. sectors. Design, design... And also, design is one of those weird things where you can say, to yourself, oh, I work in design, and go, what does that mean? could mean anything. You know? <laughs> it's like engineering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Design tables. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, design, I design book covers. Yeah, I right. design album art. Um, yeah, so, so I think adaptability is, is, sure. is, is useful mm-hmm. in, in the world of design. 
So something we've spoken about uh, once or twice in the past has been your your vision and your excitement for Africa as a continent and and South Africa specifically. Mm. It's actually one of the things that inspired me to start this podcast about mm. looking at UX culture within South Africa. Um, mm. What is some of the stuff that's exciting you, or what are you looking looking towards in South Africa's um, sort of digital journey, or yeah. that sort of thing? I I think being media practitioners, you know, and again, I'm going back to uh, using that term media practitioners because it's general, you know what I mean? It could, in all forms of media, Mm. um, I think being media practitioners on the African continent um, is a really exciting space to be in. Because it's untapped. It's untapped. And, And we are seeing emerging economies, developing countries, where all of a sudden access to devices is becoming more readily available, access to data is becoming more readily available, and what it means is people are appropriating these um, products and using them in their local context and appropriating the uh, the products in a way that works for their day-to-day lives. And that may be different to what the product was intended for. but it means there's, there, there, are, there are local problems to be fixed. There are local designs that need doing. Yeah. Um, that, 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 there, there, there are local contexts that need someone to pay attention to them mm. and design something specifically for mm. them. Um, and so I think it's a bit like a blank canvas. I think the, the, the media world is growing as countries develop, as access becomes less of an issue as I was explaining earlier where radio is still the biggest form of mm. of media in in South Africa specifically um but if you were to go and look at Nigeria say where um data prices are far cheaper than South Africa because mm. our data prices are incredibly expensive in South Africa yeah um if you look at Nigeria there there's been this explosion that people refer to as Nollywood um mm. which is the like Nigerian version of Hollywood and yeah. they're putting out more feature films per week than Hollywood is because people are access is becoming less of an issue yeah. and and people are going well I'm going to tell my story my mm. my story so I'm from Nigeria I want to make a kung fu movie but I'm going to tell you about how about problems I face in my life about the way my cultural context works, about the way I socialize. Mm. And I'm going to do that through this medium of a kung fu movie, per se. Sure. Um, and so I think what's interesting is, again, there's, there, there are people and there are stories at the, mm. at the heart of it. Sure. Um, and so I think there's so many untold stories to be told on the mm. African context. And, and you made the comment that people are using products in different ways from what they maybe were intended to be. Yeah. And for us to start maybe figuring out what are the unique African ways that we can create products in an intentional way yeah. to give people tools that they can make yeah. and, and tell their stories effectively? Yeah. Sure. I, I, I mean, I think like the, the phone is an, is an interesting example because mm. we're saying we've got to the point where the cell phone is not one thing. Um, mm. But if, you were, if you're coming from a sort of first world um, context, there was a natural progression. You know, you had the home the, the invention of the telephone and the home phones that people had in home. And it was kind of small incremental steps. And then, you know, we had home phones that all of a sudden you could walk around the home with. And then yeah. um, we had the first cell phones that could only phone and text message. And yeah. then, and so there was a sort of slow, natural progression. Um, but in contexts where, specifically in developing countries, where you haven't been exposed to all those different stages of the development of a phone. You're going from zero to a hundred. You're going from not having a phone to owning a smartphone. Mm. Um, and the way that smartphone is used in your life um, may not be the way it's, it's used elsewhere. You yeah, know, it may yeah. not be the way it no, was intended. Because lights have been turned on. Yeah, people are... People are um, I, I think it's, it's, it's also going back to... Uh, what we're saying is wonderful about the internet is the democratization of knowledge yes, um, yeah. and then you can use the internet to educate yourself in whatever way you want to you can find out about what you want to mm. it's the same thing as as the the actual d- 
device of a smartphone. Mm. It can get, can get given to you, given to you, and you can learn. You can find ways of of using it to improve your life and mm. your based on your specific context. Mm. Sure, that's amazing. So I think I think as as designers, we have an important role in telling our telling the our local the stories, African story. telling the stories based yeah. on our local context and designing products that work for our local context. Yeah. Um, and we have to figure out what we're like, what we don't understand. Yeah. In terms of like unique design for Africa, like there's there's things that we view within a like almost through the the lenses of a, of a Western design. Like, what do we, what are we failing to understand right now in our application of design in Africa? And almost like figuring that now. Yes. And yeah, it's it's, it's great. That we we've got to we've got to as designers tell the African story. Yeah. Um, because it's there. There's stories to be told. There's stories that have been neglected for so long. Mm. Um, and and I think it's it's our opportunity to do so as mm. as access to data and devices becomes more accessible. What space do you see there being radical growth within South Africa? It's quite a, it's quite a broad question. Yeah. But um, fr- from your perspective, what is an almost an untapped like part of South Africa's sort of digital journey? That's a It's tricky. It is tricky. Yeah. It is tricky. Um I think media for sure, South for sure. So South South Africa original forms, South yes, original content. Yes, uh, and uh, that that's sorry, I was taking some time to think, but that's where I was sort of going with my with my answer. I think what's going to be interesting is is as data and devices become more exa- more accessible, it allows people to become not only content consumers but content creators. And it's almost platforms in South Africa for abs- all those people. Absolutely, sure. and so so I'm excited to see. South African YouTubers, South which African, is a, you don't see that. It's 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 well. So I've got a, I've actually got a friend who's just recently started a, a um like a YouTube incubation company. What they do in Cape Town is they they yeah, help. That's cool. Yeah, they help What's South African cool? uh, special effects media South Africa. So cool. his name's Danilo Cuisto, and he um he started. And what they do is they help South African YouTubers grow their following, um, and. What's interesting is they are they are looking at traditional ways of how YouTube works, you know, and, and, and traditional ways of growing and following. But the YouTubers are telling a South African story. They're sure, telling a unique cool. story. Um they they're speaking about their context. Sure. Um which is really, really interesting. So mm. I, I, I I think we're gonna see more prosumers. Prosumers. Produ- yeah. Consumers and producers of content. That's cool. So I'd I'd like to go into a bonus question here. Just, okay. Just before we um, I'm ready. We clear out, wrap things up. Um. So so you both of us recently upgraded from a first generation iPhone. Yes. Uh. So that's like iPhone. So sort of iPhone. I have an iPhone seven plus. You have an iPhone eight. Yes. And we recently just got an iPhone ten R's. Yeah. That uses this new gestural fluid interface. So I'd like to get your thoughts on it. Uh, specifically on. The, the the part that stood out to me as a new user is this redirectionable interface. Yes. So say for example, I can be closing an application and I can swipe up to close it, but halfway through I can I may, might be able to change my mind. And I yeah. can go to multitasking with just a swipe. Yeah. There isn't you don't have to sort of users aren't tied into certain actions to achieve certain tasks. Yeah. Uh, how have you found like getting used to this new type of interaction? I actually I was I was having this discussion with my dad um ooh, yesterday. Yeah. And he's on iPhone ten. He's on iPhone ten, yes. Sure, sure. But 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 I was talking about it in relation to Affinity Designer for iPad. Yeah. Because okay. that's something we've been speaking about recently, yeah. this affinity designer. It's just the future. So like whenever I see it, I just Exactly. Mm. So that Affinity Designer is a program we both use a lot and we've used it on our Macs. Yes. And then it got launched for iPad. And I downloaded it on my brother's iPad and mm. I started using it. And what I found is it was a far more engaging experience. Hundred percent. And it was almost like the 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 physical barriers between me and my design were being taken away. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So I wasn't using a trackpad 
to dictate what was going yeah. on the screen. I was using my fingers yeah. and a pencil. And multiple hand gestures. Exactly, exactly. And so there was almost chipping away one more physical barrier between me and my design oh, man, by yeah. moving to the iPad, if yes. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and that's what I feel like with the, the step to the iPhone 10 is taking away the button. At first I was like, I don't know how, this, how I'm going to feel about this. Yeah. But it was chipping away one more physical barrier between me and my phone. Yeah. Um, and it, and it's, it's <clears throat> that, that kind of thing we're, we're talking about where I want to, within Forge, I want to make a product that um, integrates into the space, integrates into people's usage of, of outdoors, you know, isn't a foreign object. Sure. Um, and I think that's what, what it does. It, it, it takes away hardware, which gives us more access to the yeah. operating system. Yeah. Um, and, it's a, a richer experience through yeah. that and it integrates more into our life. Yeah, and, and almost like thought and action occur at the same time. Exactly. As soon as you think it, you can do it. You don't have to think, okay, I need to click the back button, I need to move back. You move whilst you create. And so I, the operating system. I think it's incredibly exciting. Like yeah. I, I, I love the feeling of using Affinity on an iPad yeah. um, because to some extent it felt like I was in my designs right. as opposed to doing my designs i'd be so interested to and i'm i'm really hoping at wwdc this year that yeah. apple create more of a space for more pro apps to come to the ipad specifically something like sketch yes but imagine doing like instead of using your mouse you'd be using the pencil you get the exact Amazing. same precision but doing ui design on an ipad yeah oh man like i i and and, and I, I firmly think that taking away those the physical barriers, and by the physical barriers, I mean like, say in a laptop, how you're using your trackpad and keyboard to engage with mm. your design. The the less um, barriers there are between you and your design, the more the creative process can take over. The less things you need to learn how to do. Exactly. It's like, you have to learn how to use a mouse. You have to get that hand-eye coordination. It's not natural. If you give a mouse to someone who's never used it before, there's an awkwardness yeah. that comes in. Yeah. Whereas touching yeah. is something natural. We do it in our natural world all the time. Yeah. So I think moving more and more towards that yeah. is yeah, it's and, inevitable. And do I think Apple have nailed their, their operating system on the iPhone 10? Not just yet. 100%. Yeah. The one thing that's been annoying me incredibly <laughs> is I regularly hit, when I'm typing a message to someone, I hit the diction button. Because, oh man, because it's, on, it's on this huge <laughs> bar at the bottom. But also, I, I, I've been battling to get to the emoji button. Oh, all the time. I, I, I find I had a muscle memory pattern where I would just knock down and get the emojis, but now yeah. I'm like having to go an extra, like half a centimeter. Emojis and dictions are not, are not working for me just yeah. yet. Yeah. But everything else about it, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really loving. I'm enjoying, That's cool. I'm enjoying the experience. And mm. Because it's a far more fluid, interactive experience. Yeah, it's and about peeling away the sort of barriers between comfortable interaction with our content. So actually, you're just wanting content yeah. and the creator interacting with it and nothing else in between. Nothing else in between, exactly. And I think oh, that's, and I think that's what, what this is doing. Mm. On that note, man, it's been such <laughs> a pleasure to have you. Like, I'd, I'd love to have you back on the show. I'd love to have you back. It's always um, a pleasure chatting. So, so yeah. if we wanted to follow you and find out more what you've been working on, what are the best ways to get hold of you online, either directly or to see what you're working on? So I'd say for me, the best is... I, I, I have a Twitter account, um, mm. but I spend most of my time on Instagram. The grass. Sli you. Slide into my DMs. Slide into the DMs. You know, my, my name is uh, bull underscore Joshua. So that's okay. bull is in like male cow, B-U-L-L -L <laughs> underscore Joshua. <laughs> that's my name. So yeah, if, if, if you want to see what I'm up to, hit me up with a follow. I post music. I post any any yeah. content um, I make and slide into my DMs. And, cool, man. And, 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 and Forge? And Forge. So um, we have a... We, we've got a website that's up and running already. So that's cool, um, cool. forgesa.com. Mm -hmm. um, so F-O-R-G-E-S-A.com. Um, and you can go into that already and access all of our all of our mapping data if someone wants to find out about hiking trails or whatever. Cool, if, cool. If, if when you're listening to this, the... So the app is... Sorry, while we're recording this, yeah. is in its testing phase. So we've got yeah. testers, a select group of testers going out and 
using it. So it hasn't been fully released to the public yet, but it's we've, we've released our initial versions of it. So if it's still not fully public, but you want to engage with what we've got, check us out online at 4jsa.com or drop us a drop us a an email at, awesome. at info at 4jsa.com. Cool. We'll put all of that in the show notes. But dude, thank you so much for making the yeah. time. Thanks I, for having I me. so appreciated this and I'm keen to talk in the future. Yeah, you're a legend. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, brother.